Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about fundraising and especially because it's coming to recession, a lot of VCs are not investing as aggressive as they used to. Uh, the valuations are kind of falling. Uh, it's very hard situation for a lot of startups. So I want to talk about like what you can do, what you should be talking to your investors. Now right now it's 2022, uh, interest rates are going up, a lot of risk money is not going towards startups, uh, people are very conservative in their investment nowadays. So what, what should we do as a startup, like how should we deal with this situation? And I found a very interesting article and I will touch upon that and kind of follow on those points that the article mentions. But like when you're talking to an investor, VC and whatnot, it's just not a one way communication. Like they would ask you for all this information to do their due diligence. But you as a startup, you also need to do due diligence. You need to figure out if this VC or this person who's in charge will be talking to you, your counterpart as a representative of the VC is a good fit to your company, to your culture, uh, to overall business. So as much as VCs would ask you questions, you should ask questions to them also. As much as VCs will ask questions and gather, try to gather as much information to do their due diligence and make sure that this is a good investment, you need to make sure that the, this VC or this angel is the right person, right VC to work with you. Because once they invest, you're kind of with it together, with them together for like five, six, maybe even like eight and 10 years. So you want to choose very wisely. So in this article that I found in Open View Partners, uh, which is wonderful, wonderful article, I'm gonna put the uh, URL, the link down in the description, but it talks about 10 good questions to ask venture capitals uh, as a startup. This question is that uh, you're asking, how do you act when things are not going according to plan? So this is a wonderful question. Because a lot of, you know, uh, VCs, uh, when, they, when things don't go well, uh, some come, you know, some VCs will just completely ignore you. Will kind of like try to write you off. Like they don't want to spend any more time or money on you. So that's one way of going about it. But some VCs uh, who kind of claim they're hands-on might be able to help you. So when the VC says they're hands-on, like you need to really understand what does that mean? What can they do? What kind of resources can they provide? You need to understand this, uh, especially when you're having trouble. Because some VCs have this like wrong understanding that they're the boss and you need to follow, which is not true. You and the VCs, like they're your partnership, uh, they provide financial resource, but you're making the business, you're creating the business. So you should have the say, you should have control over your company with respect and of course communicating well with your investors and shareholders. But um, the one thing that you should ask, making sure that is what will they do? What kind of resources can they provide? What are they thinking when things don't go well? What kind of support have they provided in other startups that they've invested? For some VCs who are young in the game, uh, don't know what to do when things don't go well. So they just panic or like miscommunicate a lot of things. So make sure that they know what to do. The second question that they have is, can you introduce me to a founder where things didn't go well? I think this is a wonderful way to do due diligence. Uh, if they openly say, yeah, okay, we can introduce you to startup A, then they will be open and they will share the experiences, whether it's you know, a wonderful experience or not, but they're quite open. Uh, I think it's a wonderful sign. If they try to hide things that they've, you know, haven't really succeeded on, that's the kind of, you know, you should have some doubt about that. Maybe they're hiding something. If they introduce you to a startup that is struggling or isn't really going as well as planned, uh, pay of course respect to that startup and their founders but like try to have a communication, try to have a meeting with them and figure out like how the VC has communicated with it. What went well, what didn't go well, what did, you, what did they like about the VC, what didn't they like about the VC and try to understand like how VCs will support uh, such a situation. Because like in question one, they can say all the things that they can, but in reality, do they keep their promise? Do they stick to their words? 
question number three is why are you interested in my business? I think this is a very basic question, but a lot of companies, startups don't ask this. So maybe VCs are just purely interested because it seems it's a great investment because they're interested in the money that they might generate, not in the business or how the business, the startup would impact the society. So if they don't have, if they don't share the sort of passion that you have, uh, things might not go well. Let's say you have this huge passion of like changing the world of how hospitals uh, work. If you have this vision, if you have this passion, even if you know whatever you're working on, maybe it's a software, maybe it's, maybe it's a physical product, but even if this doesn't go well, you can still come up with other ideas to make this you know dream, this vision uh, come to come to life. Uh, if the, v the VC, the investors are on to that and are really aligned with your dream, really aligned with your values, then they can stick on with what you're doing. Even if you change, even if you pivot, even if you move away from what you're doing, uh, what you're doing as in your product or in your service. So make sure that they understand the fundamental why you're doing what you're doing right now. The fourth question is, will you join my board? So getting VCs on the board uh, as board members has pros and cons. So you might be giving too much control of a VC, so you need to make a wise decision upon this. But asking this question um, kind of uh, is asking like how much commitment are you going to put into our company, into our, into our startup? If they're not really sure, uh, they will hesitate to be on board because it's a risk of reputation and all that, and they might not want to do that. So asking if they're willing to put somebody on the board, I think is a good kind of way to measure how committed they are in your startup. Question number five, would you buy this product? If no, tell me why. So let's say you're selling a SaaS product. Let's say you're doing an accounting software. Right away, they can use it. Uh, be, be our customer uh, or try selling it. So they, they need to do as much as possible to get involved with it. Are they willing to do that? Again, it's related to commitment. If they're really interested and really passionate about your product, they would want to use it. And if they don't, like they should have a very clear reason why they can't. You shouldn't let them just come up with all these bogus reasons. So make sure that they are interested in your product and figure out a way to use it or maybe have some people that they know use it. So, you know, your product sells well. Number six, number six is, why do you think my business will fail? Of course, startups, it's risky. Not everything for, works out. Not all startups succeed. So there's, of course, a lot of risk involved in your startup. You need to understand that. And VCs understand that as well. So, so you need to ask this question and understand what they monitor as risk in your startup. If what they think is risk doesn't align what you think, uh, there's some like misunderstanding there. So you need to kind of correct that. Maybe they're thinking something, some risk that actually doesn't exist, or maybe they understand a risk that you haven't really thought of. So VCs have watched a lot of companies and a lot of industries. So they have a more general understanding like how companies work and fail. So borrowing their knowledge, borrowing their idea, borrowing their like view of trying to identify risks and opportunity, I think is a great thing to do. So make sure that you understand the risks and you know they're aligned with what you understand. Number seven, what's the worst thing that could happen in this investment? So again, assessing the risk and also assessing like what will they do in action uh, if something doesn't work out trying to understand the worst case scenario. Uh, letting them actually think of the worst case scenario, I think is a good way to kind of understand and prepare them uh, for you know going forward, what might happen. Um, because you don't want surprises, nobody wants the surprises. So making them think of possibilities, of uh, like things that might go well, but might go wrong, is, I think a really good way to set them up. And number eight, it says, What's your vision for our company? So that having them understand and be passionate about like what your vision is, what your end goal is, 
as in like number three in the, as a professional in watching a lot of other companies in like maybe similar in the industry uh, they might have a interesting uh, vision of what your startup could be in the future now if that is completely not aligned with what you're thinking then there's a problem but if it's an interesting like version of your vision uh, it might be good to kind of explore that and understand that more in depth and there's number nine what made you happiest today these questions are really good to understand what their value system is what do they value of course as a professional uh, financial institute they need to make money they need to get returns and you know pay off their limited partners and whatnot uh, so they have the responsibility to do that in a professional professional manner absolutely but like more of like a personal uh, value system like what 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 makes them really excited what makes them really happy uh, understanding their personality is really good to communicate with them uh, if you're kind of stuck with the reality with the facts uh, some things you know don't communicate well uh, if you understand the person uh, who you're talking to uh, within the VC uh, understand their value system you can still kind of figure out emotionally how to uh, link with them how to click with them so this is really important of trying to understand the way you should be communicating uh, what's really important for that person and number 10 they say what percentage of your investment goes to female underrepresented founders so we want to be fair and we want to bring opportunities to a lot of people in an equal manner so male female regardless of the gender if the company has a very interesting and has a great track um, if this if there's a startup that's really interested uh, regardless of the sex regardless of like ethnic background uh, regardless of like what kind of education background they have like they should have that sort of opportunity so uh, checking uh, what kind of VCs there, what kind of fund they are, what do they re represent, what kind of value system do they have. Um, not just about like, you know, sex and also like ethnic background, but like kind of understanding like who do they want to invest in? Are they fair? Are they open to all new sorts of opportunities? Are they willing to listen to people? I think it's really good uh, point to make sure, especially like if you're a female founder, or you come from ethnic that is not well represented you want to make sure that they understand you that they're willing to listen to you so when you're getting investment uh, it's a kind of power game uh, sometimes the investors have more power so it you don't have that much of options to choose uh, from which v VC you should be getting investment but if you do have a chance uh, you should make sure that you do your homework and figure out like what kind of VCs they are, like what portfolio, what kind of startups they've been invested in, what kind of communication they have and all that. So because you'll be working with them for a very long term and you don't want to be stuck with somebody like you hate you, or you end up hating. Uh, so make sure you understand them well. And I think these 10 questions do a wonderful job in understanding uh, them and you know, your of how you should communicate and your relationship with that VC. So thank you very much for watching this video to the very end. I hope this was useful. If so, please subscribe to this uh, channel. Also give a like. I'll be posting more videos around startups and funding and tips and tricks about startups. So please, please subscribe. Please, please like this video. I want this knowledge to reach the people who need it. So thank you for helping out my video. Uh, hope to see you soon.